All right, thank you so much for staying with us on Tanzania at 61, celebrating independence of Tanzania. And earlier on, for the first 40 minutes, we dealt with situations of politics and government, looking at the efforts and the works of the past president, Nyeriri, Mwiza, Mwini, uh, and of course, in Kakwa, uh, John Magufuli, and presently, the first female president in Tanzania, Samia Sulu Hazan. Now, we're going to switch gears to the economy in Tanzania, how far they have gone, the post-COVID-19 pandemic uh, uh, um, in fact, on the economy and, of course, how well that they have grown the economy so far. And joining us for this discussions, we have Prosper Kwigize, is a leader, community media network and director uh, for Buha FM Radio. We also have Aikande Kwayu, a political analyst from Moshi, Tanzania. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on this uh, special broadcast. Thank you for welcoming me to join the team to discuss about 61 uh, years of Tanzania independence. All right, thank you so much. So I don't know if we have Aikande with us, but I'd like to start with you ladies first, as they popularly say. So Aikande, if you look at it, 61 years of Tanzania's independence, I mean, Tanzania is a rich agrarian society. A lot of people will say there's a bit much dependency on agriculture. So how far, how well has Tanzania grown its economy? Um, thank you very much um, for this uh, presentation today in a news article to celebrate 61 years of Tanzania independence. Um, with regards to the economy, I think overall the country has made progress. If you compared it to 1961 to date, it's been um, 61 years uh, of uh, striving of going through difficult and um, at times good times. But if you look at it, um, we have not reached, I would say, in terms of economy, where we are supposed to be given our economy, our natural resources, uh, also the potential that we have in terms of the population, the young population we have in terms of um, strategic location, geographical location, we have a long coastline. We, uh, we are neighbors with many countries that depends on us uh, when it comes to the transportation and linkage to the coast area. But I think we have not um, realized this potential. But uh, Tanzania, to understand the economy, we need to look at how the trajectory has been from independence to date. As we know that the country adopted a socialist uh, framework of organizing the economy from 1967, that was official um, ideology, I would say. Uh, it went up to 1980s, mid 1980s, when there was so much pressure from the global economy and Britain world's um, institution that we need to to change, we need to liberalize. And this is because the country got into a situation whereby its policies were not working anymore or were perceived that uh, they were responsible for the low economy and the high poverty. Of course, the country faced a lot of uh, international, uh, I would say, uh, not only pressure, but also influence in terms of um, things like oil crisis, the war we had with Uganda, etc. But that uh, was not the only reason that the country did bad. So in 1985, um, the president, uh, President Nyerere, whom we talked about in, the, uh, in this session, decided to resign because he did not want to uh, oversee the country, change its ideology, the ideology that I believe that he believed was best for the country. And uh, President Mwini took over and the economy was liberalized. So we have seen a liberal economy, but that which did not result into really lifting up people out of poverty. In terms of uh, GDP growth and economic growth, we saw projection. But that did not translate to majority of Tanzanians' welfare or improved livelihood. So at the moment, uh, we have over 30% of Tanzanians living in poverty, in serious poverty. Uh, if you, your best, uh, your analysis of poverty uh, on, the, on how World Bank or IMF uh, recognize it, uh, mm. that is the amount of people 
who are living be below the poverty line. But there are so many indicators of poverty uh, that we see many people in Tanzania still struggling. And uh, we see income um, distribution uh, is becoming unequal increasingly. So there are few people and few areas whereby people are getting richer, but majority of Tanzanians are still um, poor. Um, we have other issues, I think, such as uh, power cuts, which are very serious, and they still hit the economic growth. We have still issues in, um, um, we need to still improve our education system so that uh, we can enhance youth skill to realize uh, demo demographic dividends. So there are positive things, but we still have a big room to work on so that we can realize prosperity and improve livelihood to Tanzanians uh, at 61 years of independence. Well, it's a, it's a lot of work that needs to be done in a country of more than 60 million people. Um, you know, but of course, it's, it still has its positives with regards to the economy. Uh, let, let's bring in Prosper Kwigize here to speak on, on this. Um, Tanzania has, you know, on a mostly agricultural-based uh, economy. Uh, it, has there been any plans or any moves in the last 60 years uh, to diversify the Tanzanian economy further and to, and to go in, you know, to see if more money or more money can be raised for the country from other means? Uh, Prosper Kigizwe, can you hear us? Okay, I think we may have be having uh, connection if, issues. Uh, with if it's Prosper. okay, I, I can. Uh, please go ahead. Kindly go ahead. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to the agriculture, it's still agriculture has been the mainstay of the economy of the country, and this has been also the kind of governmental official stance that agriculture is a backbone of the Tanzanian economy. Uh, but if you look at the um, the amount of productivity, or I would say the, the contribution of agriculture into the economic output is very low. So while official statistics show us over 60%, actually close to 70% of Tanzanians uh, participate in agriculture, but the productivity is very low and its contribution to the economy is very low. So we have but a how, how do you explain that? I can how do you explain that? You know that yeah. the official statistics give sixty to seventy percent uh, participation in agriculture and yet it's contributing yeah. so low. Yeah, and yeah, because the, the productivity and the yield is very the contribution of agriculture into the economy is very low in terms of GDP contribution. I can't remember the actual contribution because I would have said it here. Sorry, statistics just went off my head mm -hmm. on that, but it's actually very low uh, in comparison to other sectors or industries. For example, in mid 1990s up to 2000s, when um, there was a lot of foreign direct investment on mining. Mining became the biggest contributor to the economy. But right now we see services, which is uh, communication, for example, telecommunication industry and financial industry, such as uh, banks and financial institutions, are contributing way further. But again, it comes back to my, uh, uh, my previous argument that a lot of people uh, are still poor because they are in rural areas. The population of Tanzania is mostly rural and they are participating in agriculture. So uh, I think there should be uh, a way that the country should try to diversify more given the potential. For example, tourism. Before the pandemic, before COVID-19, tourism contributed about 17% of the GDP. So now because tourism is, has come back, but there are also a lot of innovative way to do tourism in case another pandemic comes. Um, there's technology and there's a way that uh, I think tourism will be done. It thinks that we need to invest on, we need to invest more on education, skills enhancement, so that most Tanzanians and especially youth can engage in something that is different from agriculture. Uh, and also we need to to see how we can do rural prosperity, we can maybe do more urbanization. And I think if we stay with the same structure of the economy, 
many people are still going to struggle because agriculture is not taking us very far unless we also have a lot of skills in agriculture. But as we know and we learn from the rest of the world, agriculture itself or investing only on agriculture won't take many youth in Tanzania very far. All right, thank you so much, Aikande. Talking about diversifying the economy, we look at tourism, mining, manufacturing, communication, all the ways that uh, Tanzania can also get uh, revenue aside agriculture. And talking about tourism, we'll have a package, uh, uh, a package by our New Central crew, and that's talking about the growth of tourism in Tanzania. So we'll be right back to stay with us, Aikande. Uh, when we come back, we're discussing and dwelling more on how best Tanzania can make use of tourism to better its economy. We'll be right back. Tanzania has experienced reasonably robust economic growth and reducing poverty rates over the past 10 years, despite its rapidly increasing population. The country's GDP per capita contracted in 2020 due to the global pandemic. It still belongs to the lower middle income group of nations. The country's advantageous marine location, abundant and diverse natural resources, social political stability, and fast expanding tourism all contributed to its success and development over the past 10 years. Tanzania has a total area of 947,000 square kilometers and a population of roughly 61.5 million, with over a third of them living in cities. Tanzania's GDP was $67.8 billion in 2021, and its per capita income was approximately $1,136. Tanzania's economy is expanding again, with the real GDP growth rate expected to increase to 4 to 5% in 2022 from 4.3% in 2021. The recovery has been driven by the hospitality and restaurant, mining, ICT, transport, and electrical industries. Tanzania exported goods worth $7 billion in the fiscal year that ended in September 2022, as opposed to $4.5 billion in services. Although activity in most sectors is still below pre-pandemic levels, leading indicators like cement output, electricity generation, private sector lending, goods and services exports, non-fuel goods imports, telecommunications, and tourist arrivals have all continued to rise. High-frequency indicators, however, indicate that while economic activity was growing, pre-pandemic levels had not yet been attained. Uh, still so much, you know, of course, uh, to learn about Tanzania and to know about the, the country. Um, and uh, that's one of the reasons that we're having this conversation today. Uh, we are now, of course, going to be bringing in Prosper Kwigize. Uh, uh, can you hear us now, uh, Prosper? Mr. Kwigize, yes, uh, we are together. Uh, thank okay. you very much, and sorry for connectivity. Yeah, it, it does um, now and then. I can, as I said already, I, I said to my colleagues, and uh, I can say that compared to where we came from, Tanzania is now growing up. Uh, there is differences that we can uh, encounter as success stories. For instance, when Nyerere stepped down, Tanzania has a very few tarmac roads within across Tanzania. I can remember we had only Dar es Salaam, Morogoro, Morogoro Dodoma, and uh, uh, one, uh, one piece of road, tarmac road from Dar es Salaam to Kilimanjaro and Arusha. The entire country almost uh, were a rough road without tarmac. So uh, nowadays, we can say there are a few regions like mine where the government is struggling to connect the uh, inter-region uh, uh, tarmac road uh, from Dar es Salaam, Mwanza, Dodoma, Arusha to Kigoma. So this is success, uh, uh, success stories or success changes that we can mention uh, that Tanzania is changing. But also uh, coming to uh, the, the, the freight business, for instance, uh, the Air Tanzania. Uh, Air Tanzania, before uh, independence, had no any freight. 
traveling within Tanzania. But nowadays, we have almost eight, seven, eight to ten uh, flights traveling within and outside Tanzania. So that we can mention as, uh, as success. As my colleague already said, uh, there are challenges that still facing the, our, our country, such as political will. Uh, compared to what Tanzania has, uh, especially uh, minerals, forests, rivers, uh, we have ocean, we have lakes, uh, we have animals, we have fertilized, uh, fertilized land, a huge land. We, use, we utilize almost 3% of the utilized uh, uh, of, uh, fertilized land. But also, uh, compared to uh, so many minerals that we have, uh, like Tanzanite, you can't find Tanzanite in other, any other country in the world. Mm. So compared to what Tanzania has, and where Tanzania is remaining at five, almost the five uh, percent uh, economic growth, you can see that we still have a long way to go. And what is the challenge making Tanzania still uh, uh, going slowly, slowly, while other countries of which we got independence in at almost the same, uh, like uh, Thailand, China, and whatever. Uh, when you see the statistics, when the China in uh, where the China was in 1961, Thailand, India, and the other uh, other 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 countries uh, from the third world, you can see that Tanzania, we are still so far to reach to the what the development means. For instance, access to water, access to medication, access to uh, access to education. You see that we still have a, we still we still, we still learning uh, back without without making the, the, the effort to make sure that uh, Tanzania is changing. But another problem that I can see facing Tanzania is that we, the government has a very short period economic strategy. For instance, each, uh, we have an uh, economic strategy five years only. So having this short, very short period of strategy doesn't make us uh, move forward. You can see, when you read the strategy, economic strategy of, uh, uh, of uh, 2020 to 2025, you see that the same issues raised when the Ali Hassan Mwini was the but our, our, uh, our, uh, our uh, president, you see them again in the current development strategy, 2020-2025. It means that this short, 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 short uh, development strategy doesn't make success to us. We have to, to plan uh, at least for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, so that even if we change our government as a political uh, system, we remain focus on the development 40 years uh, goals or strategy. So having this short period doesn't make us move forward. And second, we have a problem of a political will. You can see, even in the in constitu constituents level, regional level, you see that every program which established by a certain reader is temporary. When the leader steps down, his or her plan died automatically. That is very bad. But also, the, 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 the way people, the politicians are working, are planning, uh, you, you, can, you can find that. You can't, you can't find the really political will to make the country move forward, move ahead. You can, you can imagine it. When the, 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 in 2020, our GDP was almost uh, higher than now. The, the growth was almost 7%. But maybe we can say due to COVID and the other factors, we have dropped down almost to 3, uh, 3.1. So this caused it because uh, we don't have a sustainable Tanzania uh, development goals as a nation. We rely on the miracle, on the vision, on the on the on the feelings of the of the reader, especially president.
All right, don't have a specific Sosa, I'll have to quote you there, though, because I still have questions on this government sustainable plan because it's, it's quite questionable. Since we've had the same party ruling, you would have expected that there would yes. be more continuity because most times you see that when there's a change of party in governance, that's where we have a break in continuity or government plan. So I wonder why we're having that. But I'll get back to you on that question. But I want to hear from my Kande on different issues now, still on the economy. Now, I can say Prosper has talked about the political will, uh, talked about the economic plan of the country, especially by governments. I'll also like to take a look at this foreign direct investment because he mentioned the aspect of private sector, which is a paramount sector for building the economy aside the governance. Now, earlier this year, we saw Samia Suluasan have a meeting with China's President Xi Jinping. Uh, so what's the level of foreign direct investment coming into Tanzania at the moment? Um, thank you. At the moment, I think there will be uh, an increased um, level of foreign direct investment because of the, the first and foremost, I think the tone has changed because we saw um, uh, the increased levels of FDI in um, 1990s, but mostly in 2000 during uh, President Mkapa's administration and also Kikwete's administration for many factors, including the donation, uh, the engagement, the foreign policy strategy, which was economic diplomacy. But of course, um, there are some years, um, especially in the immediate past administration of John Pope Magufuli, which expressed feelings of nationalism. And uh, sometimes it was difficult for the um, investors private invest investors to trust uh, the country, given the, the interpretation of policies, some of the uh, laws and um, policies that were passed during that administration were a little bit scary to the private sector, both from uh, foreign investors and also even internal, uh, in, internal people, I mean, internal private uh, sector. Uh, in the country at domestic level. So there was a problem and uh, of course the pandemic came in and many other factors. But now Samia, uh, President Samia has tried to engage to, um, to attend international conferences, to travel around the country, to really uh, trying to look for investors to come to the country. But there's also another argument that most of her travels has really focused on securing loans for the country. And at the moment, there is a lot of taxes um, and levies uh, on, on, on private sector business or on business at large. And this will have uh, an effect, a negative effect on the economy. There's lots of arrogance also in how um, the government engages or speaks to this um, a private sector. And also, although uh, at the president level herself, she really tries to talk about tax, good uh, business environment, uh, environment to the private sectors. She tries to um, convince people to invest. But underlying, unfortunately, still uh, we have the same policies. Uh, there is increased levies in businesses and business transactions, uh, especially in the financial sector area, banking system, and all these are really contradicting the very um, nice um, words and rhetoric that the president is pushing ahead. So I don't know, maybe she is um, facing a lot of bureaucratic incrementalism, and especially we need to understand that the the socialism and the idea of self-reliance, although it was abandoned in 1980s and 1990s, still it was so entrenched into the uh, bureaucratic mindset that it's been very difficult to uproot that. And uh, this is a problem even in economic di diplomacy. If you see how Tanzania, for example, gets into the regional um, arrangement uh, you would see when it comes to the trade arrangements such as um, COMESA or um, uh, even within East Africa custom services, uh, you would see there's lots of resistance compared to political uh, kind of uh, regional organizations such as SADIC. So the country has always been inward looking 
And as much as it's trying to open up, there is still a lot of ideological um, back, um, kind of ideological back scenery, which mm. really hinders mm. true opening up. And this right. affects in one way or another, yes. Okay, um, we'll, we'll come back to you, Ikande. Um, because, you know, all, all of this is, you know, is trying to understand what m must be done by President Hassan. Uh, if she needs to move the, the Tan Tanzanian economy forward, I remember, you know, I saw an article not long ago, I think in June, where she was being mm -hmm. praised for her strides, you know, with regards to the Tanzanian economy. Um, but of course, that is still debatable. Um, I, I want to talk about another aspect of business that might mm -hmm. um, not be going so well. I'm, I'm going to ask Prosper about this one. Let's talk about the ease of doing business in Tanzania. Is Tanzania open, you know, to visitors and, of course, uh, to um, um, uh, citizens? How, how um, you know, uh, is the ease of doing business in Tanzania? How uh, smooth is it for any person to invest in Tanzania? Yeah, for sure, we still have a challenge of uh, uh, our business environment, especially for those who are starting up the business, whether uh, it's foreigners or the citizens. Uh, we still have uh, uh, so many challenges facing the establishment of the business uh, uh, in Tanzania. Uh, uh, we have so many regulations. Prosper, can you hear us? All right. Um... That uh, uh, regulates when the Tanzanian wanted to. Yeah, I'm saying that. Do you hear me, please? Yes, go yes, on. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm saying that the environment of big business in Tanzania is not really uh, sweet at all because there are so many regulations. Uh, even if you are a Tanzanian and wanted to establish business in Tanzania, uh, you, are, you have to follow so many uh, bridges and asking for permit and the certificates. For instance, you, have, you need to register a company at Burera. You have to register uh, the, the, the business licensing from uh, TRA, the Revenue Authority. You have to register a team number. You have to go to the, the, the other regulators. Uh, that uh, can allow you to establish business, especially if you want to establish uh, a factory, for instance. There are so many, so many uh, sectors you have to follow them and asking for the permit. And they are not easy. There are people still struggling to have a uh, permit to establish a such, for instance, uh, fertilizers factory in Dodoma. There are one of the company, it's a joint company from Burundi and Tanzania, they are struggling to have the, a, a permit to, start, uh, to, to, to open the factory in Tanzania for almost two years now, waiting for that. Yes, when you see the uh, leaders, uh, especially the ministers, uh, stating to the, to the community about uh, the, the, how the environment is soft, they can say, no, we need to make Tanzania, well, at least within 7 to 14 days, the investors should have the all document. But when you go to the reality, it's not easy. There are so many certificates you want to acquire before you are allowed to start your business. So that also uh, prohibits the uh, investors with a huge, uh, 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 huge economy to come uh, to come to invest in Tanzania because they they fear about this process process that you have to follow in order uh, to have the certificate or permit to establish your business. So we still we still need to to think on how can we change uh, our our procedures, making it, that can make the uh, investors come and they feel the feel that Tanzania is a light country to come and invest. But also taxes. There are so many taxes that, as my colleague said, there are so many taxes you have to pay. I'm I'm, I'm in the media industry, for instance. We pay more than five taxes. Registration, you have to pay for license, you have to pay for uh, NSS, you have to pay, you have to pay for land, you have to pay for uh, equipment, you have to pay for you, you are, you are staff levy, uh, something like that. So, so many taxes uh, make us, uh, uh, brings barrier between our nation and the investors to come and invest in Tanzania. 
but also to, to the condo on my colleague. Why Tanzania should remain asking for loans from the country that we were together in the same level, but nowadays they are higher than us. Why did Tanzania have so many, so many uh, natural resources that can be utilized and make our country a donor country? As I said before, we have minerals, we have uh, tourism industry, we have uh, land issues, land, 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 big land to, to be used for, for economic cultivation. But we still uh, import wheat from Ukraine. We still uh, remain waiting for the Ukraine and the Russia uh, to, 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 to finish their, 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 their challenge, their problem. Mm. Why do we have a big land compared to Ukraine? We have a big, those, very are, nice those are very land. interesting so, questions you're giving right now, of course, which are also questions in our own mind, and it's not just about Tanzania, even in Africa. We talk about self-dependency for African countries. Uh, despite having so much rich natural resources, we still have lots of... Uh, imports going in instead of exports uh, outside of the country and of course we'll continue to discuss about this and how to grow the economy of not just Tanzania but also the economy in uh, Africa. Thank you so much Prosper. We could go on and on. Kigwize is the leader community media network and director Boa FM Radio. Thank you so much for sharing so much insight on how to grow the economy, on how to prosper the economy of Tanzania. <laughs> thank you so much. And of course, I can acquire you. Thank you also for joining us uh, on this conversation. Thank you. Thank you.